special moments. There'll be people, people looking at the tape of his performance for years and years to come. He's been talked about, I'm sure, since he was in, in his early teens about this incredible talent. And now he gets his hand on an All Ireland senior medal. Kerry have got the keys to the kingdom back. They are All Ireland champions for the 38th time. Jack O'Connor and his management team have done it. So, when it comes to a famine at the top level of Gaelic football and hurling, eight years really isn't that long when you think about it. Mayo are currently on a 71-year drought, Throne went 13 years without Sam before 2021, and even Dublin went 16 years between 1995 and 2011. But you see, Kerry are just that bit different, and that's even painful to admit as a Dublin fan. The longest drought Kerry ever had without an All-Ireland since they first won it in 1903 was 11 years between 1986 and 1997. In fact, since the beginning of the 20th century, Kerry have won the All-Ireland in every decade. And provided they win the All-Ireland in the decade we are living in now, it will mean only twice if Kerry fail to win more than one All-Ireland in a decade, that being the 1990s and 2010s. So you get my drift. Kerry are the dominant force in Gaelic football, the most successful county in senior football, having won 38 All-Irelands, with some of the sport's greatest ever legends coming from the county. And in Kerry, they don't just think they will do well or hope they do well. In some ways, they expect it. They know it will happen. They know that they will win All-Irelands because they always do. In a similar fashion to Dublin, there's often a a cockiness or an arrogance from supporters because of how much success they have been spoiled with. And you can understand why. These counties only expect the very best. And with Kerry, they expect the absolute best year after year after year after year after year. But as we very well know, Kerry went eight years without an all Ireland between 2014 and their success just a couple of weeks back in the 2022 all Ireland Senior Football Championship. It was the Kingdom's third longest drought of the Sam Maguire, something that most GA fans aren't used to seeing, and certainly something that most Kerry fans aren't used to seeing. And when you factor in that 2014 was the county's only All Ireland success since 2009, it did look quite bleak for the Kingdom going into this year's championship. So, in the eight years, what went wrong for Kerry, and ultimately, how did they get it right in 2022? Firstly, it is worth pointing out that Kerry actually didn't do a whole lot wrong. Sure, they failed to win Sam in eight years, but you did have arguably the greatest team of all time in Gaelic football during that time period who won six of the available seven All-Irelands. And no matter what was thrown at that Dublin side, they always found an answer. And Kerry, at that moment in time, were competing with one of the greatest teams we had ever seen. So, you know, I do think maybe we should cut them a little bit of slack in regards to that. Also, Kerry were very much at the end of an era post the 2014 success and actually, in my opinion, overachieved in many ways by getting to the final in 2015 and pushing Dublin as close as they did in 2016. In 2019, they had practically a brand new squad, an extremely young team where most players at that age don't even get to play in under-21 All-Ireland finals, let alone All-Ireland senior football finals. But there were failings and there were games and moments that they got wrong. Horribly wrong, actually. Now, before we look at the years that followed on from 2014, it is important to look at the years leading up to 2014. You see, Kerry were the team into the thousands. They won five All-Irelands, three National Leagues, six Munster titles. And that might not sound like a lot of Munster titles, but Cork were actually pretty good back then, to be fair, and won their lion's share of Munster titles themselves. Kerry had exceptional talents as Kieran Donaghy, Paul Galvin, Tommaso O'Shea, Colm Cooper, Darren O'Sullivan. I mean, the list goes on and on. They had star-studded managers in Jack O'Connor. Eamon Fitzmaurice came in. They were an elite, elite Gaelic football team. Make no question about it. The last of the All-Irelands from that decade was in 2009. And it was a strange season because after winning the league in Jack O'Connor's first season in charge... Of his second spell, there was plenty of optimism that the Kingdom would clinch back the All-Ireland stolen from them by Tyrone in 2008. However, Kerry would be beaten by Cork by eight points in the Munster semi-finals and then lacklustre performances in the qualifiers against both Longford, Sligo and Antrim, games they did win by the finest margins, but there was a general consensus that Kerry's inconsistencies would catch up with them going into the All-Ireland quarter-final against Dublin. Oh, Jesus Christ, we got that one wrong. Oh, we got that one very wrong. Kerry won the All-Ireland Final, beating Dublin, Mead, and eventually got revenge on Cork in the final. 
Kerry had done it again. And whilst that Kerry team produced some of the county's best ever football, especially when they got to Crow Park, they also knew how to win when playing ugly, something that all the best teams do. Going into the 2010 all Ireland Senior Football Championship, there was optimism that Kerry would win back-to-back all Ireland Senior Football Championships, and they weren't playing too particularly well against Down, and oh, wait, they actually lost this game, incredibly. Kerry resurged in 2011, and whilst they were starting to become an agent side, they were still formidable as ever, and favourites going into the final. Yeah, I don't think Kerry fans will want to remember that one, unfortunately. In 2012, they were beaten by eventual champions Donegal in the quarterfinals, and despite cutting Dublin open time and time again in the semi-finals in 2013, McManaman once again turned into a prime Peter Canavan coming off the bench, and yeah, another year of disappointment for the kingdom. And actually what was most concerning from a Kerry point of view in my opinion was their lack of success at underage level. Something that played a huge part in the fact that Kerry only won one All-Ireland in the span of 13 years. Something that if you had it predicted in 2009 you would have been laughed at. Between 1998 and 2014 the Kingdom won just one underage All-Ireland that being the 2008 Under-21 All-Ireland. A team that included the likes of David Moran, Tommy Walsh and Shane Enright to name a few. And the level of talent was somewhat drawing up in Kerry, ultimately until this current crop of of Kerry players started to break through. And to be honest, I'm not sure exactly why that was. I mean, sure they did produce players like David Moran, Paul Ganey, Paul Murphy started to come through the ranks in the 2010s, but for whatever reason, the quality and talent levels of that Kerry side just didn't quite seem to be the same as what they produced in sort of the late 90s, early 2000s, combined with the team that we obviously see today that started coming through a minor level in about 2014, 2015. And like I said, don't get me wrong, they did have players that did come through, such as the under-21 All-Ireland winning team in 2008, like I mentioned, and the likes of Paul Ganey and Paul Murphy. But the crop of players coming through to replace the older guard of Cooper, Donaghy, Darren O'Sullivan, Tommaso O'Shea, Just wasn't the same though, let's be honest. Hence why Kerry kept the vast majority of their older guard in the team, even though the batteries were clearly running low. And sure, these players were some of the most technical, most brilliant players the game had ever seen. Hence how they ended up playing a key role in the 2014 All-Ireland with some of the newer players that broke through like we mentioned. But the quality just wasn't the same. And once that six in a row Dublin side came under Jim Gavin, Kerry just didn't quite have enough in the tank despite pushing them as close as anyone in 2019. Mayo were another team very much in their prime, and despite all their best efforts, they fell to Mayo in the semi-finals after a replay in 2017, and that was very much the end of an era for a vast majority of the Kerry players, and very much that sort of side that dominated in the mid-2000s, that stuck around in the 2010s, it very much was the end of an era. And do you remember when I said that Kerry's underage success dried up? Well, that changed considerably. Kerry won the All-Ireland at minor level in 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018 and 2019. Kerry had won a six in a row of their own. Killian Spillane and Tom O'Sullivan were players that were part of the 2014 success. Sean O'Shea was a key part of the 2015 team. Dara Moynihan, Sean O'Shea, Jermaine O'Connor and David Clifford all started in the 2016 All-Ireland Minor win. And speaking of David Clifford, he scored 4-4 in the 2017 All-Ireland Minor win. That's four goals and four points. That's remarkable. It was clear Kerry had an incredible bunch of players coming through. And the return of Sam going to the kingdom seemed like it would happen eventually. But as we very well know, underage success doesn't always result in senior success. And clearly, from a Kerry perspective, it wasn't going to happen overnight and it was going to take a bit of time. Clifford and O'Shea both made their debut seasons for the senior side in 2018. Clifford was being heralded as the next coming in Gaelic football. Yeah, they were right about that one eventually. It would take time though as 2018 was a year too soon as Kerry bowed out in the Super 8 with a draw against Monaghan and a defeat to Galway. It marked the end of Eamon Fitzmaurice's manager with Peter Keane taking over. And Peter Keane was the man who managed Kerry to three of those all Ireland minor titles that we mentioned previously. And to be honest there wasn't much pressure on Kerry in 2019. I mean nobody outside of the county really expected Kerry to win the All-Ireland as such, certainly myself, I could see that technically they had a lot of quality, but physically I wasn't so sure, and it just felt like they were still a year or two off, but 
Jesus, they were close. To my surprise, they beat Mayo in the Super 8, Tyrone in the All-Ireland semi-finals, and came as close as anyone did to beating Dublin in their six-in-a-row run. They drew with them, first of all. They lost in the replay, but in that drawn game, they were minutes away from stopping the Dubs from winning five in a row. They were technically superb, physically not quite there just yet, but most of these lads would have been playing under 20 at their age, but here they were in at senior level. They lost via a replay, but things were looking good for the future for Kerry. I mean, this was the first real crack at an All-Ireland Senior Football Championship, and a lot of the players in the Kerry side were still teenagers. And then we have 2020. 2020 was just one of them bizarre years in everyone's lives that we very much all want to forget, to be perfectly honest. Like, let's not put it any other way. Kerry entered the 2020 Championship as one of the All-Ireland favourites, but like everything else in 2020, it didn't go according to plan. Things were slowly getting back to normal in 2021. Kerry won the league and shared it with Dublin, I think. I, I don't really know what the story was with that one. They won the Munster title and their players were improving physically and they were looking as good as ever in that league campaign and going into the knockout stages of the All-Ireland Senior Football Championship. Dublin six in a row was finally over as they lost to Mayo. All Kerry had to do was beat a Tyrone team who they trashed at the end of the league and a side who all apparently had COVID leading up to the semis and couldn't train properly. And yeah, it didn't really, that didn't really work out, did it? Peter Keane was shown the exit door and in came Jack O'Connor in his third stint as Kerry manager. The same man who led Kerry to all Orleans in 2004, 2006 and 2009. Not to mention he also won two minor all Ireland titles as manager in 2014 and 2015. And he was already very familiar with his crop of players having, as we just said, managed in both 2014 and 2015 with the minors. Jack O'Connor's management ticket involved selectors Michael Quirk, German Murphy and Paddy Talley joined as a defensive coach. Something unusual given his connections with Tyrone, but it undoubtedly worked. You see, in Peter Keane's tenure, Kerry's most obvious weakness was undoubtedly their defence. Their question marks over the personnel, the structure seemed off, tackling was poor, vulnerable to direct ball, not enough of their forward players tracking back. Kerry were just a mess defensively from start to finish. But yeah, all of that fixed in 2022. All of it. Kerry conceded just two goals from open play in 13 games in both league and championship, winning 11 and every single trophy that was on offer. Not a lot changed in terms of their attack and play because they were already brilliant at that, but the defensive stability built the foundations and ladies and gentlemen, Kerry were back. <laughs> Kerry won the league again, despite another loss to Tyrone. They then comfortably won Munster, even with Clifford away on his holidays, or he was out injured, I don't really know, but he didn't play in the Munster final. They comfortably seen off Mayo in the quarters, and then the task was beating the dubs in the semis, something that Kerry hadn't done in 13 years. The first half was exceptional, with Clifford and O'Shea doing all the damage as Dublin were torn to pieces, with Kerry leading comfortably at half-time. Dublin did get back into the game in the second half, and after a goal from Cormac Costello, Kerry suddenly looked a bit rattled, and for the first time all game and all championship, Kerry looked beatable. But they done what all great teams do. They found a way. This is, to win it. let me see, 55 metres out from the target. He has Kicking the range. into a Hill 16 goal area full of Dublin fans. A tiny little pocket of Kerry supporters way up at the top. Watching, waiting, up into the air. Is he it going it. the right way? Yes! He's got it! Shawnee O'Shea has scored for Kerry. He's got a goal at four. They are surely in the All Ireland final. There can hardly be any yeah. more time left. There isn't. Kerry, with the last kick of the game, have beaten Dublin. They have beaten a Dublin team for the first time in 13 years. Seriously, if I have to see that point again, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm finished. And for me, that was what I think was the other notable change Jack O'Connor brought to this Kerry team. I mean. The belief that they could do it, that when things were going wrong, not to lose track of what they're good at, the task at hand, and not to panic in pressurising circumstances. And I think that was extremely evident in the end in the all Ireland Senior Football Championship Final against Galway. In the all Ireland Final versus Galway, they went in as big favourites. And in the first half, they struggled. They looked flat and it looked like maybe it was going to be another year of regret for the Kingdom. 
But they found an answer. Clifford stood up. Paddy Clifford, exceptional. Killian and Adrian Splan made a huge impact coming off the bench. Kerry held their bottle. And after eight years of hurt, Kerry finally had their hands on Sam once again. And I guess the big question mark now is, will Kerry go on and dominate in the All-Ireland Senior Football Championship? I mean, that seems to be the sort of top of topic of conversation when you speak to Kerry fans or, or GA fans in general. And I know a lot of people in, in the YouTube comments on different videos, and I've even seen on Instagram as well, are very sort of quick to shut down the fact that they believe Kerry are going to go on and dominate. What I would say personally is, look, I think in terms of potential, they do have the potential. They have a very young squad. You know, Clifford's only 24. Sorry, Clifford's only 23. Sean O'Shea's only 24. But do let me know your thoughts on this video in the comments down below. Let me know what do you think were some of the big changes for Kerry winning the all Ireland Senior Football Championship. Do you think they'll go on and dominate over the next couple of seasons? I really hope they don't. But I have a funny feeling they will. So, um, yeah, we'll wrap this up here. Cheers to anyone who tuned in. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.